care of the patient with the tracheostomy. Learning outcomes. Assessing patients with respiratory problems affecting gas exchange requiring a tracheostomy. Prioritizing evidence-based care for patients with a tracheostomy. And nursing interventions for patients with tracheostomies. This lecture will coincide with not only our care of the patients with respiratory issues, but in the new skills lab, we'll learn about trach care and we will learn about, um, excuse me, we will learn about tracheostomy care, suctioning tracheostomies, and um, the correct setup of a trach collar. A tracheotomy is a surgical incision into the trachea for the purpose of establishing an airway. A tracheostomy is the stoma that results from the tracheotomy. It is the best long-term airway management, but it can also be temporary. Again, it can be either temporary or permanent. When it would be temporary, it would be someone who is requiring um, mechanical ventilation for extended periods of time so that they can um so that they cannot have everything in their mouth and it prevents aspiration more uh, permanent would be um, someone with chronic disease um, they may have um, throat cancers they may have um, be a paraplegic so there are different reasons why people would have a tracheostomy again it is access for continuous mechanical ventilation but not all patients with a tracheostomy will be on continuous mechanical ventilation. Some will be on a T-piece, some may just have it open to air. The, one of the reasons that they place these temporarily for someone who is requiring continuous mechanical ventilation is the prevention of aspiration pneumonia. It also permit, promotes better pulmonary hygiene. A prolonged endotracheal tube insertion can cause erosion and pain. So that is one of the reasons that someone who is on a mechanical ventilator for greater than about 10 days, they will um, go ahead and place a, a tracheostomy. Now, we will not be dealing with ventilators this semester. Again, that's in 495. But we are going to go ahead and cover tracheostomies in this class. And we'll be dealing with it more in our skills lab. So post-operative care, immediately after, Focus on ensuring the patient's airway. Make sure you do a focused assessment hourly. Make sure that you're looking at the bleeding around. A little oozing is fine, but you should not have copious bleeding. You should not have a deviation in the trachea either. You should have the, the ties should be nice and tight, and they should be secure. What are some complications? Well, they could end up with a pneumothorax, which we'll talk about more in our following in the class in lecture today, where you have air into the chest cavity from a lung puncture during the procedure. Again, they can have bleeding. A small amount is expected from the incision for the first few days, but constant oozing is abnormal. Any time you have a surgical incision, you run the risk of infection. They can also have subcutaneous emphysema from where you have air get underneath the skin from the new trachea, tracheostomy. And what that does is it causes puffing and you can actually have a crackling sensation when you press onto the skin. This can include an airway and you want to notify the physician immediately. What are some tracheostomy emergencies? <clears throat> When patients have a tracheostomy, if they're not suctioned, or sometimes they will get a mucus plug where they have an occlusion. These can usually be suctioned out, um, and that, that would, be would be required. They can be accidentally decannulated. What that means is, is that the trach comes out. We'll talk about this more during our simulation day, but things you want to make sure you're keeping on hand is an extra trach tube, the same size and one size smaller, an arbitrator belonging to the existing tube, a trach insertion kit, an oxygen source, suction canisters and suction source. And remember, if the patient is losing their airway from the trach, 
if you need to use a, an Ambu bag or a resuscitation bag, you need to use the mouth mask, not the one that hooks onto the trach. Because if the trach is blocked or not working, you don't want to try to put it over the stoma. You want to make sure that you are trying to ventilate um, through the mouth. And you would be doing this while someone else is trying to get in either the smaller tube or establishing um, an, an airway. Here we have all kinds of different trach tubes. I'll be bringing some to class so we can look around at them and we'll have them in new skills lab. So um, just keep in mind that there are all different kinds of trach tubes. We have fenestrated, we have um, ones that have, this is your face plate here. You have where the tube, where your ties are going to go. Um, you have some that are cuffed, some that are not cuffed. We'll be looking at all the, I have all of these in our simulation lab and we'll be taking the time to look at those um, in the lab. A cuffed trach tube is used for patients on mechanical ventilation. When inflated, the tube comes in contact with the trachea and seals it off. So the air movement occurs only inside the tube. With that being said, when someone is mechanically ventilated and their cuff is is inflated on their trach, they shouldn't be able to talk, you shouldn't hear noise around that. To prevent tracheal damage, you want to make sure that you keep the cuff pressure between 14 and 20 millimeters of mercury. And you do that with a certain, by inserting the prescribed amount of air. You want to make sure that you're checking cuff pressures at least once a shift. This is generally done in most hospitals by respiratory therapy, but in smaller institutions, it may be done by the registered nurse. So, care of the patient with a trach. Tracheostomy care, you'll see best practices on 510, and this will all be covered in simulation lab, so please don't be concerned. We will have that in simulation lab. You want to ensure that the um, air is warm and humidified. Inadequate humi humidification or warming of the air can lead to tracheal damage. We'll talk about suctioning while we're in lab, but I want to make sure that you do read the best practices on 509. You want to make sure that you uh, keep up with their oral hygiene um, to prevent bacterial growth and to promote comfort. A lot of times swallowing can be a major problem with a patient with a trach, and best, but it's best practice with preventing aspiration. So we'll talk about all these again when we are in simulation lab um, on, your, on your new skills day. Communication. Speech is possible with a cuffless tube or when a fenestrated tube is capped or covered. Um, but if the patient has a cuff trach, you want to make sure that you're providing them with a writing tablet or a picture board or flashcards that can be used. And again, I'll show you all of those when we are in the simulation lab. We want to make sure that we are taking care of their psychosocial needs. The inability to talk and the inability to communicate is a huge stressor for patients with a tracheostomy. Body image is also a huge stressor for these patients. You also want to make sure with home care ne needs, are they able to care for the trach themselves or are their caregivers able to take care of it themselves? Um, when we're in the lab, you'll see how, how delicate and how the, you need really good fine motor skills to open and to, to care for the trach. And um, if the patient is elderly or their caregiver is elderly, this may be an issue for going home and they may need additional home health support. I wanted to go ahead and give this lecture so that if you did see a trach while you were in clinical that you had were uh, at least aware of what they were and how they took care for them, we will be doing more, um, a lot more with tracheostomies when we are in the simulation lab on your new skills day. Thank you.